Hello everyone, I am Bianca from Dance for Life and we're here at the Black Blue Dance Festival. Next to me I have Paul Kelly, one of the biggest legends of the Latin American dance world. Hello Paul, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for accepting our invitation. I am very excited to discuss with you and it's a huge honor. Well, it's a pleasure for me too. Uh, Paul uh, has been um, a champion in the biggest competitions such as the international, the UK, the British, the Europeans, world, everything you can think of, he has been a champion. It's only natural that he has been, um, he is um, a two times award winner of um, the most outstanding uh, contribution to dance from the BDF. Um, so many distinctions and so many um, so many titles of uh, a great career as a competitor, but now you're a teacher and an adjudicator and in such a different stage of your career. Um, I would like to congratulate you for everything. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to start the interview a bit with, uh, with uh, a journey uh, through your career. Walk us a bit through how you started dancing, what made you fall in love with dancing. I started when I was seven years old. And uh, in the UK, there was a very famous lady of, of social dancing by the name of Peggy Spencer. She's passed away now, but she was a, 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 an iconic lady. And she had a dancing uh, studio. She had many studios, but she had a dancing studio near to where my uh, home was. And uh, one evening, I, my grandfather, I was only seven, my grandfather took me to a cinema. To, I don't know what movie we went to see, but when we came out, there was all this music coming uh, from this, from above the cinema. Uh, it's where, in the kind of back in the day, a little bit, they used to have ballrooms above the cinemas. And uh, so he said, "Come on, let's go and see what this music is." So we went up to the to the uh, we went up to the studio. It was just up these stairs, I remember. And and there was all, it was just packed, and it was so wonderful. And I don't remember why I went back there. I don't know if it was my decision or it was their decision to kind of get me into something that would be a little bit more social maybe, you know, like that. But I ended up going back to dancing and, and from the, the really near enough from the, from the uh, beginning, uh, I remember Peggy had uh, organised that I had a little girl and uh, to dance with and we were the same age and, and so I, the next moment I'm having lessons with Peggy Spencer so it was really wonderful. But Peggy was iconic in the, in the industry um, at the time and a wonderful lady so I kind of began through her like most of the, the dancers have, have uh, began through Peggy in some kind of form. It's, it's quite wonderful. And um, what made you carry on because you had a long career and I imagine there were some up and ups and downs. What made you carry on? I think in every career, of course, there has to be ups and downs. Isn't there? You know, I mean, no one's going to go through a career in any form just smoothly, and everything's just roses. Um, and, but I do believe that it's the it's the you know it's the ups and the downs that kind of uh, develop you and, and turn you into the people that you are. We are now, you know, um, through your life. Um, I just loved dancing. I think from from the moment my family put me there, it was just something that I loved. And I remember uh, when I was very young, um, thinking to I knew to myself that I will be doing this all my life. Um, and then I remember being at school. Um, I wasn't so interested in school uh, because I was always going, you know, I had to leave school, you know, it's, it's quickly when the, when the clock struck, whatever, it was 3.30, get out because I had to go to my dance list. So I always knew that it was just dancing that I would love to be doing and, and I would be doing that all my life. Um, my mother was in the law field and uh, she was kind of getting, trying to get me to be a lawyer and she kind of guided me different things and I was not really interested in any, any of these things, it was just dance all the time. And then I think that um, I think you have to have that love, don't you? That passion for it, uh, and that's what kind of takes you through all these all this wonderful journey. And I do think it is it's an amazing uh, journey and, and thing and, and, and thing to do. And I, I think it's wonderful. Um, 
having such a wonderful career, my next question would be, what is your most cherished memory so far? Well, we're here in Blackpool, so um, of course we've danced many times here. And I think one of the things that I, if I really kind of think back to those, I mean, there's many, of course, many moments, but one of the things that uh, I think we all really love, uh, especially here at Blackpool, is to have that communication with the, with the, the audience, you know, the public. and the, um, I think a little bit what is a little bit wrong of these days is that the dancers believe that everything is generated to the public and I don't believe that so much. I think as an artist you have to be, you have to go inside first and then let the people join you in your dance, you know, rather than I'm dancing for them. Um, because I think there's, the, you know, the integrity of, of the spirit of dance is not correct that way. I think it has to be about yourself. But I remember, you know, um, dancing and, and having those moments when uh, the audience just are with you and they're screaming and, and, and you just can see. Standing on the floor here at Blackpool is a very wonderful thing, you know. Um, and it's funny because when you're on the floor, it feels so big, but actually when we're watching the dancers, we see everything, don't we? You, know, you see every little detail. And it's really wonderful. And so for me, I always used this uh, place as an opportunity to express myself and you know, to show the things that I love, and I wanted that to be out, you know, um, as an artist, I think that's what we want, you know, you want to be able to get your message out, you know, whatever that might be. So that was, those were one of the, um, I had some amazing times with that, yeah. You, you've touched uh, with your answer two, uh, two aspects that I want to discuss with you, but they're very different, so I'm going to start with my favorite one. <laughs> um, you said that first you have to internalize, and um, you have to internalize a feeling and transpose it into your dancing to the public. My favorite question um, is, do you think the personality you have, the character, influences the way you perform, influences the way you um, uh, transform your artistry into dancing? Is that a difficult question? And it's quite strange. I believe that through dance we actually learn about who we are. Um, I think that, of course, we have our personalities, but as a dancer, we are shining those personalities all the time. We are polishing them to bring them out further and further all the time um, as an artist. But I do think that by doing that, the, the dance helps us to understand really who we are. And if you, if you use those tools, it's amazing because you have such a, a, a powerful voice. Um, and in dance, you it's not about just me doing this on my own it's about it's you know you want to share your love of dance um and and hopefully people love that you know and uh, talking about sharing and um having your own style um and personality and character and all that um uh, you had some amazing ladies as partners do you think they influenced each, each one of them influenced, influenced your style of dancing? Or did you influence them? Or was it like a combination? I think it's a combination. I, I, I think that um, I love the partnering side of things, you know, feeling each other's body weight, communicating. I love that. And that was really, without that, then what are we doing? You know, and so for me, that was a very big thing. And I was, in a way, I was lucky that I had the opportunity through my career to dance with, you know, some really amazing, amazing women. And I was 
um, trained from a very uh, young age with some wonderful people, but of course we all know Walter Led, and uh, very young with, with Walter, with Wally, and he always was is about leading, leading, lead and follow, lead and follow. So, um, you know, and I remember coming out sometimes um, at the lessons and just pulling my hair out. You wouldn't imagine now, but at the time, you know, you, you're so frustrated because um, of the things, the little details that it was all about. But I was learned, I was trained that it was all about, you know, my job as a man was to, to you know, lead the lady and, and bring out more of her than she can do herself. And so the thing that was ingrained in me, I, I knew that. And if I didn't do that, I felt as if I, I was... There was no point in me doing it. So that was a big thing for me. And then the other thing is that, um, you know, we are all uh, individual people, yeah? Um, and so even in the competition, of course, every, everybody's beautiful. I mean, you know, they're, they're all beautiful. But I, because of the different women that I had uh, to dance with, I, they were all different creatures. They were very different creatures. And, um, you know, some wanted to move slowly, some wanted to go fast, some wanted to do this, and some wanted to do that. And so my, what I learned from that is that there was no point in me just being one thing that led all of these amazing women look the same way. And so I had to learn how to develop these women and get what I needed from them um, and the trust from them. Uh, I had to, you know, I mean, it's manipulative, isn't it, you know, but in a wonderful way, in a wonderful way. Um, and to be able to then take them to places that they could, would not go themselves. And I think that the other thing that I learned very, very uh, early is that as a man then, you know, leading isn't about because my hand is in the right place and I turn, da, 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 da. It's, much more, it's much more magical than that, you know. Um, you have to... I know for me, because of all these different women, I had to like really see who they were, you know, and I found that very, uh, it's so creative, and, you know, and have this vision for, for them, you know, what kind of woman are they? Because if I didn't know that, how can I, how can I develop them? I would just put them into a fan position like every single other girl, but each Every single girl wanted, that fan wanted to do it in a different way. And so for me, as a, as a, just as being able to understand what my job was, was, and to take it, I hope, to a very high level for myself of creativity, I needed to really find out who those women were. And, uh, and that's tricky to find out. But I think I kind of managed to do that because all the women that I had were spectacular women and I, I'm not putting that down to me but I think they were great and I think that when I danced with them we 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 made something wonderful so I completely agree <laughs> it was uh, every single partnership we had was magical indeed and uh, talking about ladies and uh, I know you had an amazing lecture last year with Alan Torres, but two great days and two men that knew exactly what women wanted. Uh, what advice do you have for men out there? How can they make their ladies blue? What do they need to keep in mind? They have to want to do that first off. Because... Um, you know, nowadays it's a very different era, isn't it? You know, we have social media, so and, and everything is about instant gratification and also about, you, you know, individualism. You know, just do it yourself. And so this, our dance world, it takes a long time to create these wonderful things, you know, that you create with each other. You can't do that in one go like this. It takes a long time. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, it's not just one person, this is two people. And um, I think society a little bit doesn't help that, the dance now, because the younger generation are very much just on their own. You know, the men do this and the women do this, and they do it amazingly, I must say. Um, but I would, my advice would be to, those women that we, work, we, we dance with can make us also better. Um, we make them better, and if we work together, and they also make us better. Because, I mean, I, I, 
know that myself. If I help, if I help the lady to do something, of course it helps me. And um, I think it's really all about that first. It's about partnering, and then we start to worry about all the other details because I think that there's something very magical about our dance business, and I think that um, you know you can't design that. You can't manufacture it. It's just that magical thing that happens between two people when chemistry. they're kind of the chemistry, when they're in harmony, when the music's right. It's just, you know, everything just comes together. And when when they just really love each other, you know, there's a there is that. Um, of course, we we all have our fighting moments and we're crazy and everything, but that's passion. You know, that's about being passionate. And, you know, you want this to be right. But at the end of it, you have to love each other, don't you, you know? And you look at each other and, and things just happen. And I think that is when the magic comes. You have to want to do that. You have to want to find that. And uh, what would you say are the three most essential aspects of a great dance that's a difficult one, isn't it? That's a very difficult one. Because each, each couple has its own style, Correct. its own characteristics, but in your I think that to be ultimately, you want both the man and the woman to be all that they can be. Um, but doing that together. You don't want you know, one to diminish the other one. You want them both to be free to express themselves as a man and as a woman um, as much as they can. Uh, I think that, that freedom to be able to speak and dance with each other um, I think is, is a very important thing. Because nowadays everybody's, everybody's wonderful. I mean, the training they will get, everybody is wonderful. Um, but there has to be something more, doesn't there? You know, you have to have room to allow that magic to appear. You have to have room to uh, let that chemistry kind of work and not constantly be manufacturing and designing and doing all of that. You know? I, I believe that strongly. And uh, what, what happens in the cases where the lady or the man is um, has the power to express more. I think that's something as, as um, like as a teacher. Then we have to when we've got couples in front of us. Our job is to develop them as much as possible. Not it's not about what I want. It's the couple that's in front of you. Um, I'm very strong about that. I don't believe. I, I don't want to make anybody look like me or. I think that they have to be their own thing. I think that's the most valuable thing. Um, and I think that if that is the case, you have to, I mean, you have to really talk about those things and figure out, you know, what, what do you want to say then? What's, you know, what do you, what do you want from your dance? And then that you, once those things start to be kind of aired, maybe it starts to become a little bit more balanced. And clear. Yes. Yeah. So my, my next question, uh, it's one of my favorites one from, uh, from this interview because we, uh, uh, me at 26, I grew up with, uh, I grew up with uh, watching you dance, Alec Thornsberg, Brian Watson, and I would like to ask you, uh, the generation today, uh, what's the most important thing that they would need to take from your generation? freedom because we were all free to express ourselves freedom doesn't mean to say that we just go and do whatever the, whatever we want no we have to learn we have to learn how to express ourselves and so but to give you freedom because with the freedom then you can wonderful things can happen and I think that then um, that's when you know those amazing personalities can come out when you have freedom. If you don't have freedom, then you're just put behind a wall or you're trying to be something, um, and that, that is not real, you know? And uh, I think that they need to be real and, and, you know, 
uh, it's difficult today. But I think if, 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 this, if this one word is about freedom, because I think that's what we all we all had that. Um, yeah. Freedom to be able to speak. If you got, if you you know, if you don't, if we don't have that that feeling, we we shut down, don't we? You know. Or, we become all the same. All the same. Yeah, or you're trying, a lot of the dance today is that everybody, they're trying to be so good, they're trying to be so perfect, and they have so many tools that can allow them to do that, but they try so hard to be perfect that actually they just end up being generic, and everyone's the same, instead of being, I know for myself, I wasn't trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to deliver my message, and if I want to do something crazy, I'm going to do it, no matter what. That was, that was the thing. It was not about trying to be perfect. And the moments that I think, I, I, I mean, I can't speak for the, uh, the, you know, Brian or Alan or all these, all these uh, other people that were around me at that time, amazing dancers, I can't speak for them. But, you know, you, want, you just want to speak and, and not to be, the moment we try to be perfect, that's when everything just gets shut down, you know? But the trick is to, learn your craft as best you can to be able to then be free to, to, to dance or to communicate as much as you want, you know. I think that's the, that's the artistry, isn't it? This is not only a very important advice uh, for a dancer, but also a very important advice for anyone from any field. Just a life, a life. I think that's what's wonderful so much about our, our dance industry, that we learn so many things that actually can take you through your life. And we're lucky that we have a chance to, I mean, our, correct, our competitive careers are so short, really, in the, in the big span of it. Hopefully we live very, very long lives. And, and you know, that the competitive career is so short in comparison to the rest of our lives. But we're able to take dance all the way through our life. I think it's just, it's amazing, this career. Um. Hmm. I would like to go a bit further because right now you're in a different stage of your career as we spoke before. Uh, you are um, you are an organizer of two very nice competitions, the Kelly Royale in London and the Kelly Classic Dance Sporting Event in Palm, uh, which you have in Palm Beach, uh, USA. Um, how are they different? How, how do you do you organize them differently? Because obviously one is in London, it has a different flair to it, and the other one is in America, which the American dance world is a bit different. I've had the opportunity, not only with the competitions, I've had the, the studio in, uh, in Beverly Hills in, in California. Um, I had a studio, and I also had a studio in London. And so I feel that through the competitions, through the studios, um, through dancing myself and teaching now, that I've had such a broad range of, of the dance industry. And just like I dance with so many different women, and actually each of those different entities, the competition, the studio, the teaching, um, uh, all the different things, it's a different business. It's a different market. It's a different customer that you're dealing with. Um, and so you have to be very aware of what that customer is, you know. Um, and just like the different partners I had, I have to see that in them. And I can't try to make them something that they're not. Um, and so the US uh, has a wonderful dance uh, I mean, business over there, it's, it's amazing. And so the business is a little bit different there than it is, for example, in London. Uh, so is this the, um, the when I, I had the studio in London, the studio in, in uh, California, the business, the, the client is very different. And I was very lucky also when I was a teenager, there was a wonderful uh, lady of, of dance, and she, and I was beginning to teach. Uh, I was very young and, and not very experienced. I was just beginning to teach. I didn't really know, you know. And um, she was a, a wonderful lady. She said to me, I, I was talking to her, I said, you know, what do I do about teaching? You know, how do I do this? And she was very, very passionate and, 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 and in her life. And so she said to me, you know, Paul, she said, do you have to? teach every student what they need 
not what you want. And every single lesson must be tailored to that particular student. Now she said it in a much more fiery way than that. I'm not going to I'm not going to explain how she said it, but she said it and that that lesson um, was it was such a massive moment for me. Um, and and it's true, you know, like and I today I each lesson that you go into you have to deal with what that person in front of you needs at that moment in time. Not what I want is what they need uh, to develop them. And it's no different with the competitions, you know. Um, nowadays the, the industry, the, there's competitions everywhere. Um, and so, uh, and I love it. I love the, the competition organisation. Um, uh, but it's, it's, a, it's a different um, uh, model now because, because there's so many. So that kind of gives you challenges, you know, like on, on any particular day, you've got another 10, 10 events around the world. You know, that, in, that alone, uh, you know, what are you going to do to be different from the next one? And all, the, all these different things like that. So, you know, I, but I kind of go into, into it just like I did with the different partners. And just like that wonderful lady said to me then, you know, each thing that you do has to be its own thing. And um, I follow that model. And in terms of, um, as a competitor, uh, for example, let's say I am European and I want to go to an American competition, what do I need to keep in mind? What do you need to keep in mind? Um, I mean, nowadays though, the world is such a small place, isn't it really, you know, and so in any particular country you have dancers from everywhere, so, um, you know, it's very worldly, um, and that's what's it's a wonderful thing, isn't it, you know, that you, you've got dancers um, from everywhere, um, and I do think that that makes the atmosphere uh, a much more cosmopolitan um, feeling. It's, you know, and you have to put all of these different dancers into the pot. Yeah. And whatever comes out is what comes out over time. So I don't, I think now, you know, uh, what would you expect from a competition? Um, each is a little different. Each is a little different. And so, you know, the, the, for example, America is, is a little different than Asia and the European competitions. And, and uh, you know, there's competitions in colder climates, in hotter climates, all different things. And so I think nowadays you're able to kind of choose a little bit of what you would like and, and experience a little bit of everything, you know, because I think it's wonderful to do that. Exactly. I, I completely agree and I do encourage everyone to... Uh, get a glimpse of each culture and each style of dancing and teaching yeah. and it's great. And um, I would, uh, right now I would like to step a little bit more into the competition uh, field. Um, and you mentioned before at the beginning of the interview, uh, sitting in the front row at work in the audience in Blackpool and watching all those beautiful couples dance. How do you judge such a competition? I do, I believe that our eyes have seen so much wonderful dancing um, that you very quickly can catch things. Um, and you know, you have to do that very, very fast in the earlier rounds. Um, but we are trained to do that, you know, we, we know how to do that. Um, when you first begin to judge, it's always a little bit like freaky. But you get, you get used to it and, and uh, your eyes have to catch things very, very quickly. Um, and it, that is the nature of the business, you know, it's, uh, you, you can see quickly if this is going to work, or that's going to work, that's better than that, that's better than that, that's better than that. And um, you know, there's many elements to judging that we all look for, and there's personal preferences as well, people exactly. like certain things. And uh, this is wonderful to have this um, 
with the with the panel that you would have because you don't want all the same people. You want them coming from all. You want you know a, a varied variety of people because what happens is then all of those and you don't want one to mark everybody to win unless they believe that you know if one says if you say well I think this one should win and I say well I think they should six to be six actually this is good because what happens is we are there to give our opinion and you might love something but I don't think that I don't so it doesn't mean you're wrong or I'm right does it it just means that that's what we've been, we've, we've been given that task to actually give our opinion and um uh, and then it all gets put in a pot, and whatever is the outcome, is the outcome. So, um, you know, we have to be very, uh, we have to listen to our instincts and, and, and be strong and believe it, and, and uh, you know, go with what you really love. And talking about instincts, um, my last question for this wonderful interview, uh, we could go back to your 12-year-old self. What piece of advice would you give to yourself knowing what you know today? Um, just not be, don't bother about people's opinions because you cannot make everybody happy. And I, I never really tried to make everybody happy, but we all, you know, we're all sensitive and, and uh, you know, you have your little moments, but I, I think that would be the thing that I would want to reinforce in myself, is that you do, you do what you feel is the right thing. And, um, and but you, of course, you listen to the people that are close to you, you know, in everything, in every walk of life, you know. Um, but not to listen to all of the things that get spoken about. Because I think this plants that seed, and then as a dancer, or in life, then you start, once that seed's planted, that's it, you're done, aren't you? Know, you start second guessing. And I don't think we should. Our life is very short, really, isn't it? You know, in, in the bigger scheme of things. And I think we shouldn't set the second guess. You're going to go for it, you should do it. Because you know, that's the end of, end of the interview, do yeah, it. girl? <laughs> Just do it. I'm loving it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks.